This is an AQA Psychology GCSE revision video for the paper one topic of perception with a specific focus on mm, perceptual set and motivation, the Gilchrist and Nesberg key study. So let's have a look at what perceptual set and motivation are. So perceptual set is the need to select what we're going to notice, uh, choosing what is important and leaving out what is not, because every day we are bombarded with lots of sensory information that we have to perceive every second of the day. So perceptual set is about selecting what we're going to attend to. Motivation refers to the forces that drive our behaviour and your motivation can influence what you pay attention to and what you ignore. So motivation is a key factor that affects perceptual set. And so the key study that you have to be able to describe and evaluate up to nine marks worth is Gilchrist and Nesberg's study. So you will need to know the aim, procedure, findings and conclusion of the Gilchrist and Nesberg study so that you can have four marks for AO1 and five marks for AO3 if you are given a nine mark question on it. So let's get started on the APFC of the Gilchrist and Nesberg study. So their aim was to see how motivation affected perceptual set. They used 26 students and it was an independent group design where some were starved for 20 hours and some ate as normal for the duration of the experiment. Now, all participants were looked at pictures of food for 15 seconds and then the screen went blank. And they were told that they would see the pictures again, but they would look different. And so then the participants were asked to adjust the brightness of the images back to the original um, photo that they saw and they were instructed to do this at the start of the study six hours later and then at the final point of 20 hours later. The findings were that the control groups of those participants who ate as normal showed little difference in their memory of the brightness of pictures as time went on so you know it they adjusted them fine whereas in the experimental group as the participants got hungrier the images got brighter. So the images became more brighter than the original and each time from the six hours throughout the 20 hours, um, from the start of the study, sorry, six hours later to then 20 hours later, the images got brighter on each of those three occasions. And therefore, this study shows that hunger is a motivating factor that affects perception because the individuals that were starved perceived the food to be much brighter, much more exciting, if you like, than the participants who had ate as normal. So moving on to how you're going to be able to evaluate this study for at least five marks of AO3. A reminder of Grave is on the screen for you. This is how we evaluate a study in psychology in general and some questions to think about. But here are some key points for the Gilchrist and Nurseberg study for you to be thinking about how you could develop these into effective evaluation points. So this is an opportunity now to pause the video and in five seconds I will go through some of the paragraphs. So of course the fact that they only used university participants and only 26 is a small number so this can affect the results and you can't say that everybody would behave the same as such a small group of people. You've then got the study by Samford, which found very similar findings that uh, people perceived a brown blob as a burger if they went for time without food. So this makes Gilchrist and Nesberg's study reliable. And this is a good thing because other people can support their findings. This experiment took place in a lab setting and motivation was measured through brightness of images. It's nothing to do with real life. It lacks ecological validity. So it's a really poor way to measure motivation. And then finally, the study is unethical. There are lots of ethical issues with starving participants. For example, their right to withdraw. They might not have felt like they could withdraw from the study, even though they were um, starved it causes them massive psychological harm and they might not have realized sort of the extent to which they would suffer being starved for 20 hours um, so let's have a look at two evaluation paragraphs for this study the weakness is depriving food people of food is unethical so although the time period of food isn't huge it was 20 hours it could still cause them discomfort and yes they gave informed consent to take part and they knew they were going to go without food but they might not have fully understood what it felt like 
because hunger and starvation can be quite painful. And so they might have felt that they couldn't quit the study as well. So the right to withdraw. And it's not fair to deprive people of food just for the sake of psychological research. So this study is quite bad in that sense. However, the strength of the study is that other studies have found similar results. So you can use the study by Sanford, which found similar results, but it was about ambiguous images and then people more likely to think that the image represented food. And so similar results in different studies increase the validity of the Gilchrist and Nesberg study. And so that's a very good strength of the study. So that concludes the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful.